Hello and welcome back to the channel. We have an interesting follow-up story to our video from last week about Thor 4 and how it was a critical weekend for this movie and in the end it got destroyed. The thing that I was worried about and the thing I was kind of hoping is Top Gun to come from behind and score a win against this movie and that's exactly what happened. So without further ado, let's get into the story. First up, I want to show you this article. This is Superhero Movie Interest is Dropping, New Poll Indicates. Now, this is a poll that came out. It was actually performed at the end of July, and it came out on August 4th. And so this is about 10 days old now. Let's find out more about this poll. Interest in superhero films is declining amongst even fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, New Poll Finds. Survey of 2,200 adults released Thursday by Morning Console arrives in the wake of Marvel Studios Comic-Con announcements. Conducted July 30 through 31st, the poll found 59% of adults say they enjoy superhero movies down from 64% in November of 2021. Meanwhile, the share of adults who don't enjoy superhero films climbed five points from 36 to 41%. So we know exactly where those points went. Uh, adding fuel to the long-running debate about superhero fatigue, the finding comes as Marvel's Phase 4 films haven't uh, been fully embraced by fans as uh, previous MCU releases. Now, the major exception is Spider-Man No Way Home, but that is actually a release from Sony Entertainment and not from Marvel Studios. Now, Morning Consult did find something interesting, and that was that the share of Gen Z adults who enjoy superhero movies actually grew. It's not all doom and gloom, however. The poll found that Gen Z adults who say they enjoy superhero movies will continue to watch them in cinemas rose from 47% to 53%. So that went up 6%. Very interesting, but keep in mind that's only Gen Z. By contrast, the percentage of millennials, Gen X, and baby boomers all together, they said... No, not for me. I'm losing interest in this. So what's really going on here? Is it just that uh, we're all fatigued from superhero movies? Or is it really that Marvel Phase 4 just sucks? Well, let's look at some of these movies and their performance. So let's look at what happened between November 2021 and July of 2022, which are the two dates that are of interest on that poll. First of all, we had Spider-Man No Way Home. And this was an amazing film. Look, it had a production budget of $200 million. All of these films that came in, we had Spider-Man No Way Home, $200 million, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, $200 million, and Thor Love and Thunder at $250 million production budgets. Now, we can see that in the opening weekend, Spider-Man No Way Home actually made $260 million. And the next weekend, it made enough, it made another like $211 million. It definitely made enough to push it over breaking even. It needed to make $400 million just to break even on the production and advertising budget. And it did that in the first two weekends and turned in a tidy profit. Everything after that was profit in both the domestic and the international box office. Now, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is a bit of a different story. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, $200 million production budget, and it only made in total $411 million in the domestic box office, meaning it barely broke even and barely paid for itself on the domestic box office. The international box office is what really turned this movie into any kind of profitability. As you can see in the weekend box office, again, in week one, it didn't even make back its production budget. And in week two, again, it still hadn't covered its own expenses. And it actually ended up taking somewhere between six to seven weeks for it to even break even. Then everything after that was profit in the domestic box office, but by then it had already run out of steam. And if you look by week eight, when it broke even, well, it broke even in week seven. And by week eight, it had a 60% drop off and then a 77% drop off. It basically died right after it broke even. Now, a lot of this probably has to do with this story, which was a bit of a bait and switch story. We kind of knew this was coming. A lot of people talked about how this was going to happen. And basically, Wanda was going to end up saving herself. And obviously, the character, the girl character in here, 
I don't want to, I don't want to fucking know her name. Let's see if I can find out. America Chavez. So America Chavez's character in here was going to be, you know, basically um, second fiddle. And Doctor Strange was going to end up being third fiddle in his own movie. And indeed, that seems to be what happened. Now let's talk about Thor Love and Thunder. Again, like not really a bait and switch movie because we could see what was happening right up front in the trailers. But we knew that this movie was going to end up being... Well, a fair amount divided between Thor and between Valkyrie and between Jane. So we knew that in the end, this was going to be a lot about Jane Foster, Mighty Thor, and a lot about Tessa Thompson's character, King Valkyrie, which, okay, whatever, um, and not as much about Thor. And I think that in the end, but that in combination with some just particularly bad scenes, like the scene where... Jane's like, hey, by the way, I got cancer and I'm going to die. Oh, do you want to make out now? Like scenes like that where they don't let the emotions or impact of something hit. And then they just go on. Uh, it, it's just terrible. The movie also took Thor Ragnarok and dialed it up to Levin in the comedy front. And I think it was too much. Ragnarok was okay on the comedy. It was a little bit much at times. But for the most part, it was... A little bit of comedy and then it got serious again and then a little bit of comedy and it got serious they were short moments that happened at intervals and Taika Waititi just decided he was going to take that and dial it up to 11 and go completely overboard with the comedy and I think in the end that this movie just doesn't hit because it's not what people want I'm not saying that this movie particularly here is all about the message because I think in this case I don't find Natalie Portman I don't find her character to be exactly a Mary Sue because she is inheriting the power of, you know, Thor through the hammer, through Mjolnir, and through the, basically, I don't know what you would call it, a curse or enchantment that was placed on it previously. But remember, Spider-Man No Way Home had no messaging. Now, I still didn't like Doctor Strange in this movie. I haven't actually liked him since any of the Avengers movie when he got snapped out of existence and came back as an fucking idiot, in my opinion. And I don't know why. Like, who got snapped back into existence? This guy? Because this guy is not the Doctor Strange that we saw in every movie leading up to that. So I don't know what happened to him. I don't know why they're writing him different now. It's terrible. And he plays, like I said, third fiddle in his own movie, which is absolutely terrible. So what's really going on here? Is it superhero fatigue or are people just tired of the messaging? And do they want really these movies that don't have this message? Movies like Top Gun Maverick and movers like Spider-Man No Way Home. So when we see what's been released in the interim, we see that Spider-Man No Way Home came out right after the November uh, survey and everything since then has not been great. It's, you know, Thor 4 and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And both of these movies didn't really make a lot of money. In the end, Doctor Strange, Peter Dow didn't even make a billion dollars. And it looks like Thor 4 is probably going to get stuck sub $800 million, which would make it an even worse performance than Doctor Strange. And I guarantee you that is what's coming. This thing only made less than seven million dollars this last weekend. It made five million dollars. There's basically no way that this thing can now hit 800 million dollars. I just don't see it happening. And I also predict a big drop off from here out. Week seven and eight are probably going to be absolutely brutal for this movie. Now that it has been beaten by Top Gun Maverick. People are going to be like, why do I want to go see this movie? Word of mouth isn't there. And people are hearing that it's actually not a very good movie. And they're going to have a choice to make. I think the choice is obvious. People are going to say, well, look, Thor 4, solid movie, 78% on Rotten Tomatoes. Or I could go see the movie that's been out for months now and has a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. And that's what they did this last weekend. They did the math this last weekend and they went and saw Top Gun Maverick. That's exactly what's happened. And that's exactly why Top Gun Maverick is up plus 2% from last weekend. I don't think anyone saw that coming. I didn't see that coming. I thought this thing has staying power. It's going to continue to just lose at a very moderate rate. If you look at the box office, 
then it's been losing at a very steady but very small amount. It's been in the teens. So drop-offs in the teens are a normal sort of flat for a movie like this. That means that the movie has legs, that it really is going to have staying power. 17%, 18%, and then 16% in the last three weeks. But then this weekend, it turned in a phenomenal performance at plus 2%. But tell me, what do you think? Do you think people are tired of the crap movies? Or is there superhero fatigue? Or is it a combination of both? Let me know down in the comments below. If you want to continue to smash the narrative, much like Top Gun Maverick annihilated Thor 4 this weekend, then smash that like, subscribe, and share buttons, and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. If you want to support the channel, head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash and show your support.